My name is Ekaterina Manovskaya and I am a painter and I also teach painting and drawing. You can check out my work on my website manovskaya.com and I will link that below this video. Um, this segment is called Watercolors in the Kitchen and I would like to structure these series as, a, as if I was teaching a real life class. I teach a lot of watercolor classes and my hope is that some of you will follow along and continue to paint with me. So on the first day I usually go over materials that you need for watercolor painting. Obviously paper, paint, brushes. It's really important to know your materials before you start and what is the best way, what is the best solution for you right now. It's definitely okay to start with whatever materials you have, but as you go on it's better to know what paint is okay to buy and what paint is not okay to buy. Same with paper. I feel in watercolor you can skimp on brushes, you can skimp on paints, you can have various tubes of paints that are lesser quality, higher quality and it will mix okay. But one of the most important things is actually paper. Because if the paper is not in the very least 140 pound watercolor paper, it will simply not work. The paint will pull together, not absorb in the right way, and you will have nothing. So, first, I would like to talk about paper. These are actually sheets of uh, pre-cut, or in watercolor paper, we don't really cut watercolor paper, we rip it. This used to be a 22 by 30 sheet of Artistico Fabriano watercolor paper. I used to purchase sheets exclusively and uh, just tear them down, but now I purchase a lot of uh, pads. Um, Fabriano also recently changed the sizing on their paper. I think they went to a synthetic sizing, so if you have older pads laying around and then you buy a newer pad, it might behave slightly differently than previously. So these are the sheets and usually if you have the watermark, if you can read the watermark that means it's the right side of the paper and if the watermark is backwards that's the back side of the paper. Also obviously you're not going to have a watermark on every sheet of paper that you've cut down. If the grain is more uniform and you can see physical lines going through the grains as you look at it in raking light, that means it's the back of the paper. If the grain is indented and more haphazard, that means it's the front. I think for watercolor paper it doesn't matter so much which side you paint on. You can actually paint on both sides. So if you start painting on one side and it doesn't work out, especially with thicker paper, you can definitely go to the other side. So these are the pre-cut sheets. Then we have arches, watercolor, paper pad. Um, this is 12 sheets, 100% cotton, which you want to look for. Also, if you can, stay away from student grade paper, studio paper, which could say only 25% cotton or less. It's just the way the pigment is absorbed into the paper and the way the paint dries and um, either keeps or loses its color is really important. Um, I think Arches is great paper, however I do think it's overpriced for the quality that it is, but I still choose. It is the most widely available here and if I don't know what to buy then that's my go-to. There are different types of watercolor paper. Hot press means it's smooth. It's smoother than cold press. Cold press means it has a little bit more texture. So this is smooth and rough has even more texture. This is just a pad, so nothing is glued on the side. 
that means the paper will work as you paint on it, even if it is arches, even if it is 140 pounds. So this, on the other hand, is a block. I, um, I found out about this paper recently from Windsor Newton, and I tried it, and I like it quite a bit. And the block means that it is actually glued on each side, and that is done so when you paint, the paper stays glued and doesn't warp. When you're finished, so don't take it off before you finish your painting. When you finish your painting, you will take it off with a knife. And here is the slot to slide in the knife and just go around. Uh, back in the day, we used to stretch paper. It means just wet it and put, glue it down with um, postal tape or gummy tape. Let it dry and then take the tape off and that means it will not warp. Here is another company which I like. This, uh, this is my favorite. I like it more than Arches. It's called Lanacra. It's a bit hard to find here even online and it's even more expensive than Arches but if you buy the full sheets it's much more economical than buying the pad. And this is 140 pounds. They also come in 300 pounds. I think 300 pounds is great paper to paint on. It's just stiff as cardboard, but very soft in the same, at the same time. And if you make a mistake, you can actually wash it off underneath the faucet, which is what I do a lot. This is another paper that's becoming available here. I like it very much. I got it in Europe. It's, uh, what's the brand name? I don't know. Watercolor Authentic Pad. But it's not glued on each side, but it's perfect for faster outdoor sketches. The thing is, you can paint on low quality paper, you can paint with lower quality brushes, you can paint with paints that are difficult to paint with. The only thing is, it'll be much harder to get an image, it'll be much harder to mix the paint, and it'll be much harder to get going. So, just try to get um, a better quality right away. If you can. This is a Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press. I didn't think anything of this paper. I didn't like it that much. I just use it for maybe testing things out or faster sketches. That's the thing. If you have lesser quality paper, you have to paint faster and you have to get it right sooner. You have less room for mistake before the paper gets completely soaked and warped and you don't cannot do so many layers as you could on a 300 pound paper for example okay so i think that's it for the paper and usually these come in 9 by 12 or 8 by 10 if you cut it up yourself it's uh, like a 7 by 10 um, that's it for the paper. We'll talk about brushes and paints next. Thank you so much for tuning in and for your time. Please let me know if you have any questions below and also if you have any suggestions for future videos or any specific information you would like to know about painting or drawing. Thank you. That's it.